road is about to come to an end. This is Kasuna Road. Hello everybody, I'm just a simple man, and my name is Noah Foster. Welcome to this simple predictions video for New Japan Pro Wrestling Kasuna Road 2019 finale. Tomorrow night, well technically Tuesday morning, we will see the end of this. That will include two championship matches and possibly yield major impact towards the upcoming G1 Climax. And stay tuned, I will be doing a Bracketology video and simple predictions for at least the first day, maybe the first couple, shortly on this YouTube channel later this week. A lot of content coming this week. Anyway, why don't we get started. So first match. We have Satoshi Kojima and Hiroyoshi Tenson versus Yota Chushi and Yushi Nagata. And apologies if I screw up any names. So, Team of Legends and a Young Lion with a Legend. This is going to be a very interesting showcase. If nothing else, it's going to be a good experience for the Young Lion. Which, again, could be the future star of New Japan Pro Wrestling. When you think about all the Young Lions that become stars, man, it's amazing. Anyway, not to take too much time in this match, I am going to say that... Blah, 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 I'm going to say the team of Kojima and Tenson picked the win here. Should be a good fun opener. And by the way, each match has their own time limit too. This match will be 20 minutes long. Next match, 30 minutes long. Interesting 5 on 5 between LIJ and some of New Japan Pro Wrestling's finest with some young up-and-coming young lions. We have 5 on 5, Ren Narita, Shoto Umino, Tomaki Homa, Toji Makabe, and of course the Golden Star, Kota Ibushi, versus L.I.J., folks. Tranquilo. Bushi, Shingo Takagi, Sonata, Evil, and Tetsuya Naito. Despite Evil's indifference, considering he's in the G1 Climax, and obviously his recent uh, tag team affairs have not played into his favor, I feel like he's still going to be a team player. But with that being said, you cannot count out Kota Ibushi, but I hope it's not going to be Kota versus Naito, because I'm still recovering from their title match at freaking Dominion. My gosh, his neck. It's going to be very interesting. we got two young Lions here, young and hungry, one working with John Moxley. And of course, Ren Narita. Everybody wanted to pick up a win during the best Super Junior. just didn't happen. But boy, did he impress and gain experience. Again, this match is going to come down to experience, I think. But also, you cannot count out these legends. Homa, Makabe, and Ibushi. And of course, Homa using his own head as a weapon. It's still funny. With the Kokeshi. So, with that being said, ah oh man, and the indifference is with LIJ. I'm gonna say though that LIJ picks up the win here, but I still expect them to do their salute in the ring and Evil to walk away. And we'll head into the G1 Climax with that in mind and Koda with that on his mind too. Good fan they're not in the same block. Anyway, next match. 30 minute match. Could be a teaser of things to come. Mikey Nichols and Juice Robinson versus GLD, Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga, the good bad guy and the current IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions and Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. So Mikey Nichols and Juice Robinson, they teased this in their last tag team bout on the last Kasuna Road, I believe, last week. Uh, I gotta remember to go back to the date. And Mikey Nichols and Juice Robinson, they seem to have worked as a pretty good team, I thought. They could become potential contenders, I believe, for the titles, which I'm sure are going to be defended within uh, the next month or so. Definitely before Royal Quest and the Energy One Climax. But with that being said, and build of things to come, you never can count New Japan for wrestling bringing you upsets. I am going to say that Mikey Nichols and Juice Robinson pick up the win here, and it could potentially lead to a tag team top opportunity. I expect it to be hard-hitting, very interesting, and I expect Juice Robinson to deliver the left hand of God to Tamatanga. Moving on, we have a 30-minute 4-on-4 tag team bout. Sho and Yo, Rapungi 3K, former IWGP light heavyweight tag team champions, and their partners Toho Hinare and the ace of New Japan, God bless his body, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Bullet Club people. Taji Isamori, Chase Owens, Yuji Takahashi, and the Switchblade, Jay White. Ever since Jay White took over Bullet Club, even in defeat, Bullet Club has been on top of New Japan Pro Wrestling and redefined. Bigger, stronger than ever, it seems. But with that being said, there's no tile on the line, and Sho and Yor are coming off their tag team tile loss. So, with that, and the ace, which you can never count out, plus the ace recently picking up a pinfall victory for his team in a recent tag team match with a unique roll-up on Chase Owens. 
I am going to say here that, because oh, ELP is not in this match, I just noticed. Hmm. I'm going to give it to the uh, New Japan good folks here. Rapunga 3K, Toro Hanari, and the ace of New Japan, Roji Tanahashi. I just hope his legs hold up during the G1 Climax. And keep in mind, Jay White's also in this too. Several of the participants from the show are in the G1 Climax. Let's go bears how they go into it. Moving on, let's move on to our next match. Fifth match, 30 minute time limit, another 5 on 5. It is, I guess you could say Chaos and New Japan Legends versus, y'all know what I'm about. Kasa Ninare! Suzuki Goon. It is Tiger Mask, Jujin Funda Liger, Toriyano, Tomohiro Ishii, the new Never Open Weight Champion, and the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, the Rainmaker, Kajutsuko Okada, versus Suzuki Goons, Dukai, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, the Heel Master, our Holy Emperor Taiji, Lance Archer, who says everybody dies, and then the guy that I believe who should be in G1 Climax and is going to do whatever it takes to be in it, and probably try and take out freaking Okada before he takes out Liger. Two incredible one-on matches I can't wait to see at some point. The King, Minoru Suzuki. Oh man. Okay. So, Suzuki Gun's coming off a loss in a 5 on 5 elimination match that involved being eliminated over the top rope pinfall or submission against Chaos. And it came down to the headhunter Yoshihashi and Zack Sabre Jr. Neither men are in this match, and you'll find out why shortly. I am going to give it here with everything that's been thrown at freaking Okada by Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer. And Suzuki Gun, you know what's going to happen here. It's going to start out probably easy and then it's going to go all over the place because that's Suzuki Gun style. But Toriyano, he's a guy that's known to pull off upsets. And then you have Liger and Minoru who I feel are just on a crash collision course one on one to each other. I honestly feel that's going to be uh, Juzin's last match and it might happen at Wrestle Kingdom next year. Oh man, so many different interviews here. But I am going to say that I gotta go with my boys, my faction. Suzuki Gun picks up the win and further, further pushes that statement. A Minoru Suzuki should be in the G1 climax. Or as I should say, everybody dies. And good luck, Okada, on your health. Alright, moving on from there. Sixth match. We get into the special matches now. Our sixth match is for the British Cruiserweight, that's right, you heard me, British Cruiserweight Championship between the current champ, the headbanger, El Fantasma, one of my favorites, versus the coach, well, I guess you could say co-coach now in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Rizuki Taguchi. So this is not obviously the first time these two have made sure one-on-one -on -one if you saw Best of Super Juniors, and Taguchi beat him during it. They've been throwing a lot of trash talk back and forth, and these two, I'm sure, have been ready to face Jenna one-on-one again. And this is for a title. I feel like Taguchi has been reincarnated this year in New Japan for wrestling, but you can't argue the impact of El Fantasma and what he brings to the ring. He went through a grueling, grueling ladder match against David Starr to win the freaking British Cruiserweight Championship, and he values that with his life. And now he's co IWGP Junior Tag Team Champion. So, with that, I am just going to say here that El Fantasma keeps the Bullet Club momentum going, and he picks up the win. It's going to be a very intense, aggressive, grueling match. I feel we'll play off the Best of Super Juniors match toward the finish, but I feel like El Fantasma will have a counter for it. So I'm going to say El Fantasma retains his title. Which brings us to our final match of the night. The British Heavyweight Championship and... A spot in the G1 Climax at stake. It is the champ and the guy in the G1. The submission master, Zack Sabre Jr. Versus the headhunter, Yoshihashi. Their 5-on-5 five five elimination match came down to these two. Yoshihashi won through some trash talk. And basically goaded Zack Sabre Jr. not only put up the title, but his G1 Climax spot on the line. This is Zack Sabre Jr. though. He is no stranger to New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's freaking won the New Japan Cup and took Okada to the limit. That potentially could be a final this year in the G1 Climax if he in it and makes it all the way. Yoshihashi though, you can't count him out. Coming back, I mean, he's crazy. I love it. I'm going to keep it simple though here because that's what I do. And I got to really think about my next video which is G1 Climax Bracketology among other stuff. But anyway, I truly believe Especially with Royal Quest in August. These two are going to be up again. They're going to make some unique matches for Royal Quest. 
But I don't see Zack Sabre Jr. losing his spot. You think Minoru Suzuki is going to unleash hell? If Zack Sabre Jr. isn't in it, everyone's going to be at the mercy of both of these incredible submission matches who I believe are the Rev Pro Tag Team Champions. So with that, I'm going to say this show closes with Zack Sabre Jr. stating himself as the winner of this match and to win the G1 Climax. Zack Sabre Jr. takes it all. Yoshihashi, good luck to you, brother. So, that's it. Those are my simple predictions for Kazuna Row 2019, the last night of it, and our last event before the G1 Climax, as far as my schedule goes, anyway, according to Japan for Wrestling. With that, I am done, so let me know what you all think down below. Like, share, subscribe, comment, hit that bell. Let me know your predictions. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all of Japan for Wrestling and art wrestling in general. And if you want to talk more to me, know this. I'm just a simple man and a lifelong fan of wrestling. So if you want to talk to me about anything wrestling, look me up on Twitter, dodi2.com forward slash Noah. It takes to my Twitter page. Or if you don't like URLs, it's at nfoster1916. Or follow my simple YouTube channel here at youtube.com forward slash users forward slash Noah Foster 210, where you'll find predictions, retrospectives, rants, simple takes, and my pride and joy and heart of this channel, my weekly series on cruiserweight wrestling called 205 Life Matters, discussing cruiserweight wrestling and primarily 205 Live. And as always, folks, support independent wrestling in general. It's where it all comes from, whether local or afar. Respect where it starts, because you never know what can come out from it. Hence, AEW, and so much more. And as always, support NoDQ, support my friends, support their channels, support Aftermatch Wrestling, support, you know, uh, Armbar, ARMBR, Commission Point on Facebook. There's so much I could say right now, but I'm not used to doing this enough, so, you know. And of course, I like to close, because I keep it simple here. Support your wrestling, I was big and small, and let's keep growing this recipe together. Simple as that, go buy a shirt, NoDQ.com forward slash shirts. With that, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned later in the week where I'll be doing predictions for Ring of Honor, Best in the World. Defiant presents uh, Built to Destroy and oh yeah, New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, Southern Showdown in Melbourne, Australia, where I cannot wait to see Will Ospreay vs. Robbie Eagles, which is sure to be match of the night. And also stay tuned if you haven't already, go watch the AEW Fire Fest predictions I did with Team Indy DQ. They're already on this channel. So with that, thank you all for watching, listening, tuning in. Go watch some wrestling. Enjoy time with your family. Share a laugh. Share a story. And until the next video, I hope you all have a good night.